Hello, floss tube stitchers. My vintage stitches for this week are four new temporary models in the shop. I'll take them home again as soon as the charts sell. But I had these charts from quite a while ago, dated 2001, and they were really cute designs, but the chart just didn't sell that well. So eventually I decided to stitch them and Here's the original, Forever in My Heart, was a company owned by partners Linda Ormi and Wendy Petros, and Linda decided to stop designing, and Wendy is now From the Heart, Needle Art by Wendy, so you may know her designs, but anyway, I'm thinking that the original photo just did not do them justice. It's not real clear. Maybe there's too many other things in the photo and the frames are too big. I don't know, maybe a combination of factors, but they're really cute. And after a while, I just decided I had too many charts left and I needed to stitch them. So maybe 10 years ago, I stitched these and I obviously was planning on kitting up the fabric and the thread and I had added buttons to them and I never did. I don't know where the chart is with all my notes and so after they got framed they just sat at home for years and I discovered them recently and I still had six charts left. So the first one is Be My Valentine and all of these were stitched on different hand-dyed even weaves, either Joblin or Lugana. And I don't even know whether they're all still available, so maybe that's why the kits didn't get made. But I added a button to each one in place of one of the motifs. Then the next one is I Love America. And they were really quick stitches. Then there's Trick or Treat. And the last one on the chart was Happy Holidays with the little sugar cookie. So I have charts left. They're $6 each. They can't travel alone because it'll cost me, you know, almost my profit to mail them. But if you wanted them added to another order, get them all you can. And then the models will go back home in my totes for the various holidays. Alrighty, now on to my current stitching. So I did have a finish. It was almost finished when I posted for Whip Wednesday. I just had a few more things to do, but this is Calico Confectionery's Mind Your Own Beeswax. And she showed them as little pillows in a bowl but I'm looking for other possible ideas. So I did get a few on social media. Um, I'm actually thinking maybe a box top and to hold stitching things and maybe the bees could be um, a scissor fob and a pin keep maybe. But if you have any great ideas for how I could finish those differently, let me know. Then I was working on the Blue Flowers contribution to the Meow the Merrier. And it's this lovely little Boo Kitty. And last week I had the Boo done. And this week I did the um, orange part of the pumpkin. And this was on 32 count Pampas from Picture This Plus, uh, just using DMC. Then, because squirrel, squirrel, actually pumpkin, so in my Primrose Cottage Stitches Auto, they sent me a free copy of their newest chart, which must have come out like immediately after market. Maybe it wasn't printed yet or something. And I thought, oh my gosh, I would have ordered a ton of these. Um, so this is done on 28 Wheat Lugana. And I do have that on order, but I didn't have any in stock. I do remember it was a very pretty color and I thought this was kind of close. This is by Seraphim. It's 32 count Lugana in the color Moss. And 
yeah, I guess that's a pretty, it has maybe a little bit more color than what's showing. That's not a bad uh, picture of it. And I just worked on that for one evening and got a couple of the pumpkins done. So that's that. And then we'll move on to Expo and Autos. So as you know, a lot of designers have automatics for shops, but when they participate in a trade show, they often have different rules or guidelines or perks for being an automatic customer. And some designers will let you know ahead of time what's coming, show you pictures, and then you can decide whether you want the entire automatic or whether you want to change your quantities. Um, obviously, they're probably hoping that you increase the quantities, but in this case, Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery is very much aware that sometimes the reproduction samplers are not always the style of each shop. So she allowed us to change our auto and I eliminated two of the charts and of course I got orders from them. So it backfired on me. I should have just accepted the entire auto, but I'm on the Sunday stitches auto and I do get 18 of these. So this is the latest one, Come Thou Fount, and it was done on 36 parchment. And I do have it in, I think, I think I said 32 and 40. It's not as pink as it looks in the picture. Parchment is a really nice neutral, so it would this would go on almost anything. And then, hoop, there it is for 12. I always have to look, I can't read backwards, my handwriting. And this is part of a series of funny needlework sayings that she did. And this, again, I think was a charity piece. It was released last December on her website, and now it's available to all. I think I'd like to do the series for my craft room, and I would probably do it on like a denim blue fabric or a neutral fabric with denim blue um, hand eye thread. So we'll see. And then Perry Pryor is one of the reproduction samplers. And I just, I just really loved this. I loved how ratty and worn the original was. And I loved her true uh, reproduction of it. And, you know, I like deer. But I passed on the other reproduction sampler. And I passed on the Biscornu because they just don't sell for me. And maybe it's because we have nobody here that does them. And I've never done them. Um, they seem easy when you watch the videos. Um, but we don't have a model of any. And we actually, we, we're not teaching right now. And we don't have a finisher. So that could be part of the problem. And then she had two new Christmas ones that unfortunately were not able to be released at Expo because she was still waiting for the official permission since they came from somebody else's artwork. Um, okay, the rest are um, true Expo purchases. And I'm gonna start with Cassandra from Fairy Wool in the Wood. Look how sweet her business card is. And I did do the live chat with her. Wasn't able to do it with everybody. And then for people in Europe, obviously some of the times were the middle of the night, but I was able to chat with her. And this is her little, this, it, this isn't the invoice. It's just her little note that was included in the package. And it's just so adorable. Like that is not typing or any other type of print. That is her handwriting done on graph paper. And she put all the little drawings and there's me and there's her. It says blah, blah. And her note says, hi, dear Shelly. Thanks again for your order and especially for the fun Italian English conversation. So um, that was just one of the highlights of um, the whole expo was having that conversation with her. And one of her new things I had previously gotten from the distributor, but I did order more directly from her. And it was her witch, Tina Linen. And Tina is her grandmother that I think basically raised her. And so a lot of her witches and ladies are modeled after her grandmother. So she called the fabric witch, Tina. And every piece is different. This is just so funky and crazy and 
um, suitable for Halloween, I guess. So um, let's see, the size is 14 by 20 and the value is $24. So if you tell me what the next Halloween piece is that you're going to work on, or maybe the last piece that you finished, however it falls in your rotation, you will be put in a drawing for um, this piece of linen and we'll do it next Sunday. So um, I got a whole little, little bundle of them and they're all different. All right, and the other charts that came from her, whoops, I'm grabbing too many here. All righty. Katniss, and they all include the charms and the jingle bells and the buttons and, you know, whatever it calls for. Dogmas. This is Michelin Guide for Cats. Nativity, and it has the little star charms. That looks like it might be done on Witch Tina Linen. I didn't open it up to see. Probably should have, but you know, I've been kind of busy. Then she has the ABCs of the season, and this is winter. I love the sweet finish with the lace, and I love that snowflake charm. So these are 10 except for spring, which is only nine, and I think this I think this was the first one in the series. And then, you know, all the costs go up, printing and photographs and everything. So uh, the rest of them are 10. Um, this is summer. This is autumn. Whew, I just had a little coughing fit. Uh, this is Halloween. And then <clears throat> Happy Halloween by Tina. And the last one is Sea Time. All righty. And then we have Manny Tadana, also an Italian. Actually, this is all the Italian designers today. <clears throat> she had five little pumpkins that has the three designs and the whole saying, the whole poem. And <clears throat> it includes the finishing pack and the button. So it's 15 for the chart and eight for the finishing pack, but for this first round, I need them to be purchased with the finishing pack, since those were limited edition, basically. Or will take much longer to get reorders of. This is Grateful Heart Pillow. It's 12, and the embellishment pack is also 12, and it includes the three pins. The Pilgrim's Pillow is 12, and the pins for that are 14, because there's four of them. Here's Witch Spells for 15. Oh my gosh, I can't read my own handwriting backwards. I love her little display there with her, her poison bottle and her little spell books. So cute. Then she has something called Four Seasons Lovers Pillows. So this is winter. And these are all 10. This is spring. And I just noticed when I was pricing them that they all have a scarecrow. A lot of times you only think of a scarecrow as being in the fall, but different parts of the country, different parts of the world may use scarecrows in all the seasons. Then she had a reproduction sampler. I think it was her first one. God Save the King. And that is 25. All right, I think I already showed the one that dropped on the floor. All right, and then Romy's Creation. Another Italian designer. Friends with Cassandra at Fairy Wool in the Wood. And she had Cats and Coffee what a cute finish and i included the little um, handmade cat buttons um, they're six and the chart is ten 
Christmas calories for eight. Christmas in a jar for 10. And then more of the Halloween alphabet. So these are all 14 and you get two designs. So there's E and F, G and H, I and J, K and L, M and N. And then she had these really creative finishes here. This is Halloween greetings. And you could probably do this with some different things, some different designs, use the idea of finishing them separately, but you could also put that on one piece of fabric if you're not into finishing two pillows. And then she had winter greetings. And for 12, samplers are my happy place. Then, because I had completely forgotten to order the chart way back when, I had this linen from Fabric Flare that I had gotten. I can't remember if I got it from them direct or the distributor, but it's called Dreamy Clouds. And I completely forgot what it was for. And when I shopped at Expo, <laughs> I was reminded that it's one of Romy's. I think I saw it at a Nashville market and just forgot what the chart was. Silly me. Okay, next designer, since we're going alphabetically, is Scissor Tail. So for 10, we have the two designs in Autumn Blessings and two designs in Christmas Cheer, three in Halloween Party Signs, those are cute. Can you imagine those leading the way to your Halloween buffet? And then she was on a purple kick this time. This is purple pumpkin patch. And then this was the one with the limited edition pumpkin button. And it's $11.50 and includes the purple button. Okay, next is Stacy Nash. Boo to you, pin keep. Butternut house pin keep for 12. And on some of her pictures on social media, she shows the black owl waxer hanging from the side. But maybe, you know, when she does the full on uh, front of the piece, it didn't show. So these were. Um, differently staged photos on social media. So anyway, we do have the waxer and it's 10. And first snowfall. And this one, she showed the Jingle Bells waxer and that's 12. Jack-o'-lantern sewing pocket. And Actually, did that show the jingle bells or did it show the snowflake? Now I don't remember because I thought I saw one of the snowmen hanging from, but you could, you could add this to anything. You could wear it as a necklace. You could use it as a waxer. So now I'll have to go back and look at the pictures. I can't remember which one was on first snow. And then a big one that I got is the witch. And this is 16. All right, then, don't want to forget anything, but I better just take them as, they, as they're sitting in the basket so I don't forget anything. Uh, Canadian Stitchery was a new company that I found at Expo, and she has really high-quality laser-cut wood pieces. And I got the ugly sweater line. So I will be reordering these because, as you can see, I, I will need to. Um, this was the very first one in the series, and it's just called Ugly Sweater, and they're all 20. If you see them for 25 on the internet, it's probably, uh, that's the Canadian price, so they're 20 in U.S. dollars. 
So then she had to start naming them as she came out with different ugly sweaters. This is Festive Dinosaur. And I had told her that the snowman was my favorite and she said, well, I'll wait and see what your customers think. The dinosaur, I should have had 12 of these, so I, I will be reordering very soon. This is the gnome, a moose, penguin, polar bear, and then she has two with complete alphabets. So this one is a stripe with a kind of a, a block, contempo, maybe alphabet, and then this is more of an italic alphabet, and it's a solid. So you could easily um, change the colors out, and um, they're, <laughs> they're just so funny. I don't want to participate in an ugly sweater contest, but I do have some sweaters that would probably qualify. They weren't ugly when we bought them all those years ago. They were in style. Okay, that's that. Then I have some larger charts. So Audi TM had some new ones, and I was kind of saving up my list. So this is Cinderella. And that's 20, and it was done on Polywog Princess. 28 count opalescent Lugana from Fabrics by Stephanie. And then Courage was a fairly new one within the past couple months, I guess. Let It Snow, I think, was from the last expo. Then she has another gobble couple, Sabrina and Harry. And that's 18. You could do them individually as as well, like as easels or stand-up blocks. And this was done on 28-count Rainforest Linen by Crossed Wings Collection. And then another one in the Fairy Tale series, Snow White, and I did not open it up, and it doesn't say on the back what it was stitched on. So I'm sure you can find it on her social media. Then... My Big Toe had some new charts, and you may have noticed that I tend to post My Big Toe inspirational or biblical charts on Sundays because I like to just show something positive and inspirational on that day, and I don't think she's on Instagram, so we've talked about that, and um, I like to uh, show those because I know you're not seeing them directly from the designer on Instagram. Uh, so, com Communion in the Lord's Supper. And she is famous for using ready-made frames from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. So, doesn't have to be expensive to frame them. The Earth is the Lord's. Every good and perfect gift. The God of Peace, Merry Christmas, she also put it in the French, One Stitch at a Time, don't we all need this in our craft space, sewing room, and Quaker Sacrifice. Then she had some great accessories, and oh goodness, now I see that the sun is coming through at just the wrong spot, but I'm almost done, so I'll keep going. This is her B tin. Oh shoot, you're not gonna be able to see how cute they are, but they're in, the beads are in shades of gold, and there's um, like a flower and a bee in the uh, metal embellishments. Anyway, this is a, a, a tin for 18. And then she had a set of, I forget what she called these, but it's something about blue mood or whatever, but I knew I had to have them. 
So these are the three needle minders. And then there's matching thread keeps. But because I have these, this is the way she sent them, um, magnetized to each other. I'll just show you that, that I also got um, a music one. All right, so those were the needle minders. And then these are the thread keeps in the blue. And these are 10 and the needle minders are six. And then she had a couple special sets. So for 18, this is the Merry Christmas Sheep. Although they're subtle Christmas colors, so you really could use it all year. And then um, I'll show you this one next, the Mermaid. The beads are so pretty. And pumpkins, let's see if I can show you without the sun blocking the view. So that's really cute. Um, I think that's all I had to show you, but I accidentally buried last week's winners. So this was the Mystic Fabrics, the three choices. She had sent them as eighth yard cuts as a gift, and I decided to pass them along. So the pink, it's actually called Please Scream Inside Your Heart. This goes to Charla Francis. And Big Sky went to Rain Jude. And the Winter Solstice went to Stacy Wartina. And I've already commented on their comments and we'll wait for their mailing addresses to come via email and we'll get those out this week. So now I guess, I guess I'm really done now because I'd have to wait probably a whole nother hour uh, to be able to finish it without um, the crazy light coming through. Anyway, I guess that's it. Happy stitching to all and I hope you have a great week and thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.